Welcome to River City Kids Online. We're going to get started with a big fun song, so stand up and do the motions. Here we go. Staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. Reaching beyond the skies Running deep, stretching wide Perfect love realized Here with you Come on now Now the start is for real You will never let go Never let go Oh, it's more than just words Love beyond my control Out of control It's time for the big idea. So today I thought maybe I would show you and go through the actions and everything. Since we're talking about the power of the... Excuse me. Yes? Have you seen my quarter anywhere? I'm looking for my quarter. Your what? I, my quarter. I'm looking... I'm looking for my quarter. Have you seen uh, my quarter anywhere? Oh, uh, Have you seen it? Uh, boys and girls, anyway. this is... Uh, oh, 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 hey. Oh, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> boys oh, and girls, this, this is... Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, what's my name? It's, uh... I don't know, but you look really familiar. No! I kind of poked your eyes. Are you okay? Uh, okay, all right. I'm going to be okay. Okay, that's <laughs> really bad. Okay. Uh, oh, see your mustache. I am... See your... Oh, hold on. See your mustache. Hey, uh, hold on. Yes. Look, I am a nun now. No, no, put that. Okay, 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 okay. Listen, I don't know. Your hat is still all. Oh, 
tape and Don't that. Worry. Okay. And, okay, I'm good, I'm good. <sighs> what are you doing here? I'm here to uh, do, do something. I keep forgetting things. Uh, it's the, uh, the big, big idea. idea. The big idea. The, the big, big idea. idea. Okay. Yeah. You're Definitely. gonna help me with the big idea. Well, I, I was gonna do the big idea. What? Cause you, we don't need you. What, what are you talking about? What do you mean? I, I'm going to the big idea. No, no, I'm here and I'm going to stay no, 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 right no, here. No, 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 I'm here. I'm going to stay no, right I'm, here I'm and gonna I'm going to do the... Oh! Oh, 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 man. He really hit the floor hard there. I think he knocked over something. Are you all tight, Master Jamie? Oh! Oh, my goodness. Oh! He's a really, really... He's just kidding. All right, anyways. Okay, I'm here for... The, Senior mustache. What? Why'd you do that? I thought it would be funny. They laughed. <laughs> you thought you'd do. Oh my goodness. You thought you'd do. That was do... really funny. Yeah. You thought you'd do what? What? Do this! Oh! Oh, okay, okay, look at Hold on. Hold See on. your mustache. Big idea. What is it? It's, uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives something my subconscious is Gives me power. Gives me power to. That's it. To think. That's it? That's it. That's yeah. it. Okay. So, so the big okay. idea is the Holy Spirit gives me power. And you have to like oh, show okay. off your muscles, right, okay? Okay, okay, here we go. Ready? The Holy Spirit gives me power. power. Yeah. That's hey, that pretty cool. Pretty good. All right. Yeah. Ready? Okay, here we go. Hit the big idea. What's the problem? The Holy Spirit gives me power. I'll be, okay. I'll be back. I, I'll see you guys later. <sighs> Wait, the exit's that way. <laughs>As you guys know, it's BGMC Sunday this week, and every month we focus on a different country. This month, the month of July, we are learning about the Philippines. There are some missionaries that are doing incredible things to reach kids. So here, take a look. All across America, kids are filling up buddy barrels just like this one. But have you ever wondered what happens beyond, beyond the barrel? The barrel. The Philippines is an amazing country with lots and lots of kids. Imagine kids living in shacks made out of garbage who've never had a toy in their life. And we have some amazing missionaries that are there, Daryl and Sandy Blashley with Family Circus. Imagine a giant circus tent, room for 5,000 kids, and those kids come piling out a little jeepneys. Imagine a little tiny taxi that might hold 10 and 45 kids come piling out. They're hanging out the windows and hanging out the doors because they're excited to hear about Jesus, excited to have fun, excited to have someone who loves them, someone who will take care of them because of people like you, kids like you, adults like you who fill up a barrel, things like this get to happen. Thank you for what you do for the Philippines. And that's just one example of what happens beyond, beyond the, barrel. the barrel. Wow, isn't that incredible? Missionaries are reaching all of those kids because of your giving. Hey, keep up the great work and drop off your buddy box at the church at any time. As you know, at River City Kids, we've been learning all about God. Yeah, we've been learning about how God is eternal. He is everywhere all the time at the same time. We've learned that he is all knowing, that he's all powerful. We've learned all about how God is three in one. It's called the Trinity. Yeah, I brought with me today this board that has several different shaped holes in it. As you can see, I have a square here, I have a circle here, and I have a triangle right here. These are made to fit three different blocks of those shapes. Yeah, but you know, our God is three in one. Not three different gods, but one God who shows himself to us in three specific ways. Three persons. We call it the Trinity. To show you what I mean by that, I brought with me a shape. Yeah, it's a block that can actually fit all of those shapes 
perfectly. So when you think of God being like a, like a father, watch, it fits right in here like this. Perfect fit. God is like a father. He is the one that loves us. He's better than any dad that we could ever know here on earth. No matter what our parents are like, we've got a heavenly father that can fit the need, that can help us in any situation. Then we also know about God being like the son, Jesus. Yeah, look at that. It fits a perfect fit. Look it. Jesus was sent to earth as a person who could live for us and die for us. And he's the one that fits the role of God's son, Jesus. Yeah. Over here, we have the triangle. And look, it fits a perfect fit. See, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the very Spirit of God. God himself who came to earth to be with all believers all at the same time. And so, if you want to know about God more and more, what you need in your life is God's Holy Spirit leading you, guiding you, and giving you power. As a matter of fact, that's our memory verse this week. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. So this verse is telling us that when we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, we have power. When Jesus left this earth and he rose up to heaven, he gave his disciples this command. Go into the city and wait there until you've been clothed or covered in power. And you know what? God's Holy Spirit wants to fill people today. He still fills people with his Holy Spirit. And guess what? Kids can know and be filled with his Holy Spirit. I hope you'll watch today and find out all about the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to get into some slow worship. So if you would for me, please stand up. Raise your hands as we give praise to the Almighty God.
I've been reading my Bible. And here in Acts chapter 2 is the story of the Holy Spirit coming and filling Jesus' followers with power. You know, it happened that Jesus' followers gathered together in one place and they waited for God to do something. Jesus told them to do this and so they were being obedient. And wow, what an amazing thing. It happened. They were filled with power. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at this story so you can see what it might have been like. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, do you hear this? They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Well, there you have it. God's Holy Spirit was poured out onto the believers and they were able to do whatever God needed them to do because they had His power. But let me tell you something, Jesus still sends His Holy Spirit to His followers today. Yeah, the Holy Spirit comes to be with every believer, but you know He also wants you to have an experience where you're filled up with an extra measure of that strength and power to go and do whatever Jesus needs you to do. And it doesn't matter if you're a kid, an adult, a grandparent, where you're from, what you look like. If you're a believer in Jesus, you can have His powerful Holy Spirit living and working inside of you. 
So we are learning all about the power of the Holy Spirit to fill us up from the inside. And you know what? When he fills us up on the inside, things happen on the outside. As a matter of fact, I brought with me this strange looking tube and box kind of thing here. And you know what? It's important that you see this. You see, there's an outside part. Look, I'll show it to you all the way around. There's even a strange looking window so that you can see through to this brightly colored tube right here. Here, I'll show you the tube. Look it, there it is. See, you can see right through it and you can see right through the window that tube. Did you notice something? Each one of those pieces that we looked at they looked empty. And you know, that's what it feels like when you're a follower of Jesus, but you're not full of the power that God has for you. Uh, let me tell you a, a little story. It's a real quick one, but it has to do with what we're talking about. You remember the disciple called Peter? When Jesus was arrested and taken away to be crucified, Peter was questioned and he was asked, hey, aren't you one of his followers? Here was the problem. Peter did not have any power on the inside. And so when he was asked, hey, aren't you one of Jesus' followers? Well, Peter act a certain way on the outside. He said, no, I'm not one of his followers. I have nothing to do with Jesus. You know, Peter did that three times in a row. You know, the amazing thing is, Jesus even knew that Peter was going to do that and told him, Peter, you're going to tell people three times that you don't even know me. Peter did that because on the inside, he had no power, nothing there to help him make right choices so that on the outside, he would do the right thing. People could just see right through him and knew something wasn't right. Well, I got to tell you, something happened to Peter and a bunch of other disciples and followers of Jesus. They came together and they prayed and waited because Jesus told them to. And while they were praying and waiting for God to do something, a mighty rushing wind came from nowhere. It sounded loud. And then it was like this fire came down and landed on top and rested over the top of them. It looks like tongues made out of fire that rested over the top and they began to speak in other languages that they had never learned. It's called speaking with other tongues. As they were worshiping and praying in these various languages, people outside of the house where they were began to make fun of them and question them. Somebody came out and walked out and stood in front of the entire crowd, thousands of people, and that man began to declare all the promises of God. And what they were hearing was the promise of God's Holy Spirit. He told the story of Jesus and he wasn't afraid. But let me tell you who it was. You probably guessed, it was Peter. See, he was full of power. No longer was he empty on the inside. Suddenly, he had something in there that caused him to want to make the right decisions. Suddenly, he had inside of him full, a full measure of the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter began to tell people the story of Jesus and he wasn't afraid. See, something was different about Peter that day. He was no longer empty. He was no longer someone that people could just see through and see all of his faults. Instead, Peter was able to show everyone that was there how full of the power of the Holy Spirit that he had. And that day, he was able to share the story of Jesus with all those people and thousands, 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus because Peter had that power. Do you know what this is? Yeah, it's a rubber chicken. I've always thought these were really, really funny. And you know, I'm using this because it makes me think of our story of Peter today. You're probably wondering what I mean. I want you to think about it. If you've ever been around chickens and you ran up to one and, and tried to scare it, it will run away, afraid of you. 
chickens are afraid. If you've ever had somebody say to you, oh, you're just a chicken. <laughs> it's because they're telling you you're afraid of something. And you know, Peter, he had a chicken living inside of him. It was fear. But you know what? When Peter said, I don't want that fear anymore, I want God's Holy Spirit, well, you know what? He no longer had that fear in his life. And guess what? Have you ever been afraid to make the right decision and stand up for Jesus? If you have, it's because you've got fear living inside of you. But here's what's great. You can say, you know what? I don't want this chicken in my life. I don't need fear. No. As a matter of fact, you can get rid of that chicken by inviting the Holy Spirit to be with you, in you, filling you up with power. Right now might be a good time for you to gather together with your family and pray together that God's Holy Spirit would come, be in your midst, fill you with His power, and work inside of you. Will you pray with me? The Bible says that how much more will God give His Holy Spirit to His children who ask Him? And you know what? Today, I want you to do something simple with me. I just want you to ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit. You could pray something like this. Lord, I need your power today. I don't want to be afraid. I want to do what's right. I'm ready. Send your Holy Spirit. Fill me so I have power, I can be your witness, and I'll be just like Peter. I'll do what Jesus needs me to do. As you pray that prayer, and as you ask God to fill you with His powerful Holy Spirit, let Him speak to your heart. Let Him work inside of you. Let Him have his way in your family and in your life right now and every day. You just got done watching River City Kids online. And hey, if you liked what you saw, why not give this page a like and maybe even follow us. We got a lot of great content out there and we want to be able to get it to you so you can watch it. Well, until next time, see you guys later. Later.